Hey guys, so you probably heard about how quantum mechanics is a very weird theory and it's very unintuitive. I want to get you a little bit to understand how that is. The specific thing that I want to show you is called quantum bo bomb detection. And it's about how in quantum mechanics you can actually measure something or detect something without interacting with it. So I know that sounds weird and unbelievable. It's almost like you know about something without even touching it. We're used to, whenever you look at something, light is bouncing off of it and it goes back to your eye. So here I'm gonna tell you how you can say that, basically look at something without light actually bouncing off of it. So let's step back and talk about the basic idea of quantum mechanics. So let's say you had an electron in this room and it could be in one of let's say nine different positions could be here could be here could be here could be here whatever so in order to specify its position in classical dynamics you would just say you just have to say in which box is it so it would be one two three four five six seven eight nine so you just have to give me one number its position which could be either one or two or three or and so on. In quantum mechanics, it takes each one of these possibilities and say, well, you can have a combination of them. So let's say an electron can be here. Well, it could also be here. Okay, so what quantum mechanics says is for each one of these possibilities, you can have the state of the electron. So this weird symbol just represents the state of the electron what it happens to be now, the way we describe it. So, if that was one, let's say it's half one squared of this, one squared of this. So it's partly this, partly that. One plus one over square root of two times two. So what this means, there's this squared, that's one half probability that you're at one. So there's a probability one half, you just square this number, that you're there, plus one half that you are at five. Okay, so this is the weird part of quantum mechanics. It tells you that you can somehow be in this position and in that position, okay? The other part, the other weird part is uh, the superposition principle. It says this state Let's say it starts here at time t equals zero. You are at the state which is completely determined to be one. You just start at one. Then you wait for some time, let's say at t equals whatever, three. You are at some state, maybe it's three and nine. So this is this state, which is one over square root of two in three plus one over square root of two in nine. And let's also assume that if you started in a different state, you're gonna end up, let's say, at t equals zero. If you start at seven, you end up at t equals three in the state a little bit in three. You can say one over square root of two or in three minus one over square root of two in nine. So you can also have a minus sign there. And so the superposition principle tells you that if you started in initially in a combination of these two in one and seven, you're gonna end up in a combination of this and this. And if I added these two together, the final state, so if my initial state was one over square root of two times one, plus one over square root of two times seven, then your final state will be only three because you added plus and a minus and these two cancel. And that just gives you three. So this is the weird part of quantum mechanics. It says the particle started there and it went into these two states. And it started there and it went into these two states. But somehow when it started both here and here, you have more particles coming in in some weird way, you end up all, 
without this, like the particles almost cancel each other. And so this is the, this is what is called quantum superposition, and that's one of the weirdest parts of quantum mechanics. 